there's so much that they don't understand about it. You want to fix things and you want it to be yourself. And I think when it's someone else, it's really difficult because you're not the one dealing with it, but you want to help. Welcome to Healing Together. I'm Deirdre Tomlinson. Today I'm speaking with Sarah Cooney Nutley about her autoimmune disease journey, how she was diagnosed and treated, and what she's learned about herself and others as a result of the experience. Sarah has Crohn's disease as well as celiac disease. Our conversation covers her path to diagnosis, medications, emotional well being, Irish dancing, and communicating with colleagues about Crohn's. Please enjoy my conversation with Sarah Cooney Nutley. So my name is Sarah Cooney Nutley. I'm 27 years old. I live in London, England. I am a financial services consultant and I really enjoy Irish dancing. I've been a, a well, I'm a formal professional Irish dancer. I was on tour for a couple of years, then was a competitive Irish dancer up until last year and now I'm looking to become a teacher on the side of my full-time job. So maybe just to start off, what is Crohn's disease and and how do you explain the disease to people? For me, Crohn's disease is anything where you have any ulcers from your, your mouth right down to your rectum and then that's the sort of physiological side and then in terms of the actual symptoms, it would be anything from fatigue, uh, stomach cramps, going to the bathroom, and getting sick. In terms of how I explain it to different people, it really depends on what sort of knowledge base that they're coming from in the beginning. If it is someone that has absolutely no idea of Crohn's, I'd say really simple terms, say I have small ulcers in my colon and that's what, um, that's what it is for me. And then I think if someone has more of an understanding about Crohn's and they understand that what it is in those terms, I'd say what that leads to is could be extreme fatigue, often going to the bathroom, urgency, and then that's how I would explain it. Sure, that makes sense that you would have a sliding scale where you go into more detail or less detail, sort of depending on the audience. What's your story with Crohn's? What, what were your initial symptoms and when did you get them? How old were you? What did they, what did they feel like at the time? Um, so yeah, my diagnosis with Crohn's was actually quite a long process. I first went to the GP, my general practice doctor, when I was 14 years old, way back in 2007. And it took six years to be diagnosed. So in 2007, what my difficulties were was that I would have urgency going to the toilet. I would all of a sudden have to go to the bathroom very urgently. I would um, I would probably, as soon as I finish eating, would often need to go to the loo. And I realised that I was going to the bathroom a lot more than people around me. And then also that urgency. That was my real initial symptoms when I first went to the doctors at that age. It sounds like you you did go seek medical help at that point. What was the response from physicians? So when I first went then in 2007, I don't know if it was a lack of me not being able to articulate how I felt or I didn't explain the symptoms as severely as what they were to me at that time, but it was sort of a, oh, it's possibly your age or you're a young woman, you're at school, you could be stressed. So at that stage, it was just stress. That's what the doctor said was my issue. And I sort of went away from that thinking, oh, well, maybe it's not that bad. But again, looking back at myself as a 14-year-old, so 13 years ago, maybe I didn't actually articulate how severe my symptoms were or how much of a big deal it was for me because I was probably sitting in the doctor's surgery with my mum quite embarrassed because it was the first time I'd be really speaking to anyone about it. That makes sense that it would be a bit of an embarrassing conversation for, you know, especially for a 14 year old. And if you weren't super clear about the severity of the symptoms that the doctor might sort of talk you out of it almost. Yeah, it was, it was, I don't know, I can't really remember it too much, but if I was 
my age and as confident as what I am now, I probably would have laid it out a lot more on the line. But then equally, I still explain that I was going to the toilet a lot more than normal. So I think there's a bit of two ways there. The doctor may have been able to look into it a little bit more, but then equally, I could have been more assertive of actually, no, I know I'm not feeling that great. What happened next over the next few years? It took me four years, really, to go back to the doctor from that. So I went back in 2011. The thing with my parents at that period of time was it was very much in the moment. So when I had those periods of time when I had to go to the bathroom, it was awful for that, say, three minutes. And then afterwards, it was gone. I could go about the rest of my day. I was generally healthy, generally doing things that I wanted to do. So I kind of pushed it to the back of my brain and it wasn't really at the forefront of my brain. As the years went by, it became worse. When I was, say, 16, 17 years old, I'd be a bit embarrassed. Like if I was staying at a friend's house and I'd use the bathroom and it would smell. So it sort of impacted me in that sort of way. But I had other things that distracted me. I was, as I mentioned before, I was an Irish dancer, so I'd had lots of competition. So I couldn't go to some parties because of competition. So it wasn't my crone stopping me at that point of time. I was busy studying for exams. So I know in the States you do SATs, but we do something before that age. So when we're 16, we do our GCSEs. So I had GCSEs. And then when we're 18, the same as you guys, when you do SATs, we do our A-levels. So I had a lot of distractions. I think for those four years, I kind of distracted myself and convinced myself, oh, I can still do what I want to do. It's not that bad. And then it just got to a head after a few years when I was just exhausted by it. So my final year of school, the year before you go to college, I had no energy. I was eating, but I wasn't putting any weight on. I was losing weight. And I just thought, do you know what? This isn't normal. And that was, it took four years for me to get to that point. What happened when you went to university? Was that something you did right after school? So 2011 was when I finished school and I wasn't very well and I knew it in myself. I had a couple of what I now know was um, times of having active Crohn's and I just thought I had to sort myself out. So I decided to take a gap year and I went to the doctors and I really prioritised that and getting checked out by the doctors because I really wasn't in the place where I was mature enough or ready, healthy enough, I thought, to go to university. So I went and got some checks, and I actually ended up going on dancing tour. So I went, I did a professional tour for not the whole year, but two months, and came home for two months, get my checkups. And in that period of time, I actually got diagnosed with celiac disease. If you don't know what celiac disease is, it's um, intolerance to gluten, and that's also in your bowels. So it, it, it all made sense at that point in time. It made sense that, oh, well, this is what's wrong with me because I had trouble with eating and going to the bathroom. So it was like tick, tick, everything was fine. That took me from 2011 to 2012. And so then I thought I'll be able to go to university now and make sure I don't eat gluten. And I went to university in September 2012. And I just remember after three weeks feeling just absolutely drained and awful. And I just never felt so sick. I was like, maybe university is not for me. Maybe I can't live away from home. Maybe that's what was wrong with me, that I needed my support of my family. Or it was just a different environment that I just couldn't cope with. After six weeks, I just felt so unwell. And then I ended up leaving university then. And I went home and I swore my doctor and they referred me to my nutritionist because they thought that I potentially... Obviously, university student, there's a culture of going out, drinking and people eating poor food. And I knew that I hadn't eaten anything badly because I was very particular around it. And I went to the nutritionist and she actually said, you can't blame everything on your celiac disease. Maybe there's something else. From that, she recommended me back to my, um, so I had a gastro doctor at that time, so my gastroenterologist. And then he referred me for an IBD test to rule out IBD. They didn't think I had it. It was just to rule it all out. So I'd left university in the October, November time. Then in March 2013, I had a colonoscopy. And that's when they found out that I did actually, in fact, have Crohn's disease. Hmm. Wow. So it took a while to get to the diagnosis. I guess I'm wondering how you felt 
when you got diagnosed with Crohn's, did you accept that diagnosis immediately? Did you feel relieved? Did you feel frustrated with that? I found it quite difficult in all honesty. I was so twenty I was twenty years old. Um I kind of felt like my whole world was tipped on its head. It was more the framing of how I was having it because when I had celiac disease, I had a positive blood test for it. And it was, you probably definitely have celiac disease. Your family are from the west coast of Ireland. It's quite common there. So you probably had it. So I was, when I went into that endoscopy, I was very prepared for my diagnosis of celiac. When I went for my Crohn's colonoscopy, it was more the way it was framed. It was, we don't think you have it. And we're trying to exclude that you do have it. So when I did get that diagnosis, I found it quite tough. And also... I, like many people, actually really didn't have any idea what it was. Very much no IBS. IBS is quite common. People talk about that, and that's something I knew. But IBD and Crohn's, I didn't really know anything about it, apart from I knew one woman, her children danced, um, this one woman, and I knew she had Crohn's, and she was very unwell a lot of the time. So my experience was, wow, this is going to be me. This I'm just going to be poorly for the rest of my life. So, yeah, I found it very difficult at that point in time. Well, I want to ask about how you've managed that beyond medical treatments, you know, emotionally, psychologically. But maybe before we get to that, just to sort of round out the story, once you got diagnosed, what did you do from a medical perspective? And what have you been doing since then? So medical wise, I've had quite a few different treatments that I've been on. After 2013, after I got diagnosed, I did actually go back to university and I finished that. But I always found that I was ill in July. So all my exams were in June and always July was this sort of like trigger point. I think I'm someone that probably exists in a state of stress, which isn't good for Crohn's. But once I'm relaxed, that's when it always flared for me. So um, for the first couple of years, I was on very light medication. I think it's called um, mesothyprine. It was just one tablet a day. And that kept me ticking over for the first two years, so from 2013 to 2015. And then in 2015, I was really, really bad. It was kind of like back to when I was back at school in 2011, and I'd lost loads of weight, couldn't keep any food down. I was rushing to the toilet, severely exhausted. I was in bed for three days solidly over a week, which isn't normal for me at all. I'd go mad. And then at that point, I had to go into steroids. So in 2015, I went on my first and thankfully only steroid course for 14 weeks. I started off at 40 milligrams and then I had to wean off five milligrams each week. And that was for 14 weeks back then. What it really showed to me is how sick I'd been for a lot of my time because when I was on steroids, I felt absolutely weird, but I felt so good. I was like, wow, this is what it feels like to be normal. And then after that, they decided that my original dose wasn't enough. So I went on to something called azathioprine. And azathioprine was a different drug to the first drug I was on to. I remember I had to have a blood test for that. They had to make sure I didn't have a certain enzyme. And I was borderline, so I could only have a small amount of dosage. So I was only on 75 milligrams, which wasn't a lot, apparently. I'm not a scientific doctor, but apparently that wasn't a lot. That did keep me settled for a couple of years. And then 2017, I went back to sort of that period of when I was really ill for a few days. And it was three solid days of not being able to move and then just feeling generally rough for weeks on end. And then I went on to something else after that. I went on to an injection called Humira, which was something that is a self-injecting pen I did every four weeks. And that really had no impact on me. So I did that for, say, six months. I had absolutely no impact on me whatsoever. So then after that, I went back to my gastroenterologist and he put me onto a different family of biological drugs. Ustimab is the technical name, I think. I'm on a brand called Stellara. I did an infusion for three hours. And then after the infusion, I had an injection. Started off every 12 weeks. And then the last few weeks of that 12-week cycle, I was starting to feel unwell. But generally, like eight weeks, fantastic. Now I'm on eight weekly sessions and I have an injection every eight weeks. And that's a biological injection. So that's my medical history of uh, the medication that I'm on. But now on that eight weekly cycle, I definitely feel a lot better. Wow. 
Well, I'm glad that you feel a lot better now on the eight-week cycle, but it sounds like it took a lot of trial and error to get there. It also sounds in some way, you know, you mentioned there was something that worked for a while, but then stopped working. It sounds like it's something that you have to keep paying attention to because there might be multiple times in your life that you need to continue to try to figure out what the right medication is. Yeah, I think a lot of it is like listening to your own body and I definitely got better over the course of time, but really detailing when I go and see my gastroenterologist, like detailing what my symptoms are and how I'm feeling and really reflecting like, is how bad is this? Is this what it was like before when it was bad or is this only mild? And I think a lot of that took me being in tune with my own body. Well, that sort of points us in the direction of my next question, which is how else have you managed your disease? the emotional, psychological, physical aspects of the disease? And what have you had to learn about yourself to better manage your Crohn's? So I think there's quite a few different sides of that. I think stress is one thing, managing stress. I don't mind stress. I quite enjoy, it sounds odd, but being a dancer and with school, I quite enjoyed stress, but it's a knock-on effects of stress. Being so stressed that you don't eat well or you don't exercise. For me, exercise and eating well have a massive impact on my Crohn's. If I'm eating poorly, I don't know if it's also because I've got celiac disease as well, but if I'm eating poorly, then I feel bad in myself. So that's one thing that I really have to make sure I'm eating the right foods. If you're in a flare, as many people might experience, fibers aren't the best thing to be eating because you'll be going to the bathroom a lot. But when I'm not flaring, I really do try and eat green foods and I really try and have a balanced diet, lots of fish and chicken, all the sort of things that agree with me. And what I've learned is what might necessarily work for me might not work for someone else. So I know the foods that work well within myself. So definitely think food was one aspect. And then exercise, for me, once your body is in a good place inside, it also has to be a good place outside. But then the outside reflects on the inside. So if I'm exercising, I do generally feel better as well. So exercise and eating well are two big things for me. Then the third thing I had to learn was accepting my condition and making sure that I was making good choices for me. So when I was just diagnosed, even if I wasn't feeling well, I'd still go to things. So I'd still go the birthday party even though I felt sick I'd still go to this event and what that meant was I was just delaying the inevitable so if I kept going to these places what would happen is I'd completely crash so instead of missing the birthday party or missing the dinner I would then end up missing three days of my life because I felt so awful so what I've learned is if I do feel unwell actually take the correct measures for myself if I'm tired and feeling run down really accept it and embrace it and be like, you know what, I'm going to go to bed early tonight. I'm going to come home from work. I'm going to have some dinner, have an early night, go to bed. I'm not going to push myself. Equally, if I had, say, a dance class or an exercise class and wasn't feeling great, I would be the sort of person that would never skip it and never miss it because, oh, you can't do that and you're weak or whatever. But I actually was like, no, if I go to this one, that means I'm going to have to miss three next week. So I really started to make those good choices for myself and for my body and then I think the final piece of the puzzle for me was I went to counseling it took me a long time to actually get there I didn't go until September 2018 so it took me five years of the disease because I didn't really want to do it um, I didn't really think I needed to do it didn't really understand but then once I got there I realized that I was holding on to a lot of stuff and I hadn't really address a lot of that sort of feeling and that anger that that I was diagnosed or unfair or I'd missed out on things and I think getting it all out and actually saying this is how I'm feeling was really good I'm the sort of person that didn't really want to dwell on the bad things and wallow but actually there are some things that aren't great about it there are some downsides and you have to not dwell on it but equally you have to do understand that the, your life is different and I think accepting that was something that really helped me to start making choices for myself and really make sure that I prioritize my own health and wasn't pushing my body when I shouldn't be. 
Thank you for sharing all of that, especially the learning that that you had to kind of go through. I think that's really valuable to hear about and to understand. Today, at this point, how do you talk about Crohn's with people, with friends and family, with colleagues, and what do they say? I definitely find it a lot easier to talk about it now. Having Crohn's is something that most people in my life and in my world do know about. So it's something that I don't get embarrassed or I don't find difficult anymore. Whereas before I did find it difficult. I think a bit like how I would said about describing how Crohn's to people depends on their knowledge level. The amount I share definitely does depend on the people I'm around and how I share things are very different towards different people. So say my close immediate family, my mum, my brother, my sister, they probably understand it a lot more so I could go into more detail. Whereas some extended family members might not quite actually understand what I'm going through. So I might be like, oh yeah, I'm just not well today. Wouldn't potentially go through all the difficulties. My close friends, I think I got to a stage where you have to be honest with your friends because you don't want to be the person that's cancelling plans because you still want to be invited two months later. So I think really having that honesty and being like, you know what, I'm really not great today. I can't come out today, but why don't we go grab breakfast or something in a couple of days time when I'm feeling better. I think once you're honest with people, they do generally really respond to that and they respect it. And if they don't, then they're probably not a good friend to you. Workplace was something that I've learned a little bit more growing into different jobs. I've learned a lot. So now the way I approach it is... I have regular meetings with my doctor. So I go to the hospital every three months just to check up, blood tests, so forth, just to make sure I'm taken away. So by telling people, oh, yeah, I've got a hospital appointment for my Crohn's disease, that really is an easy way of just getting it out there and letting people know. I don't need to be like, oh, sit down. Oh, I have Crohn's disease. Like, it's not really a normal conversation that you'd have. It's not like, what soccer team do you support? It's not really like that. But by having it out there, then if people do want to ask you questions, it's easier to talk about it. So I try and get it out there in a way that is organic. I definitely wouldn't try and hide it. Whereas before, when I was younger, going into workplaces, I'd be worried about what people would say and wouldn't want people to think that I'm using it for sympathy or using it as an excuse. But now I think getting it out there makes it just easier and healthier for me. Yeah. So I understand autoimmune diseases can be particularly hard because people often can't see them. And as such, they aren't nearly as sympathetic as they might be perhaps in the case of other conditions. Do you find that to be true or do you disagree? Um, I think it's harder because people don't know. I travel to work on the tube. It takes me an hour every day. So I get a bus and then two tubes and London is very busy, hustle and bustle, you're fighting your way on. And I think if I had something wrong physically, people would happily offer you a seat. Whereas if I've got bad stomach pain and I'm like doubled over in pain, people probably wouldn't necessarily know to offer me a seat. Now they are doing things now, people can wear badges and say like, offer me a seat or now toilets have signs that say not every disease is visible. But I do think it's harder for Joe Blog, so like the random person on the street, to actually know what's going on with you. But I do think there is a lot of awareness. Well, like once people actually know that there is something and you do have an invisible disease, so to speak, I do think there are people understand it more. But it is it is hard. You can't tell on the face value. Even say if I was going to the supermarket and I was parked in a disabled space because I needed to go to the bathroom, people would look at this girl and be like, oh, she seems healthy. She's running along. So why does she need that spot? So, yeah, it it is difficult, but it is getting better. I'm curious, what advice would you have for someone who's just been diagnosed with Crohn's? Oh, good question. I think when you're first diagnosed, Try not to overwhelm yourself with too much information. You're entering in something that you may or may not know a lot about, especially if you don't know a lot about it. I would try not to read too much because although it's great hearing about other people's stories, not everyone's story will be your own story. At the start, at least get sort of a physiological, so 
if you could read the medical website, ease yourself in. If you're studying or learning a new language and you read War and Peace in Russian, you wouldn't really understand it. So I think ease yourself in gently mm-hmm. and think allowing yourself to feel your emotion. So even though it's a physical disease, don't forget about the mental side of it and how this physical disease can often stop you doing things in your day to day. So if you break your leg, you can't walk. If you've got Crohn's, there might be some days when your stomach feels so bad or you might not be able to do your normal daily activities. I think understanding that side of it is also important as well as the physiological side. At the start, just try and learn a little bit and think about yourself and connect with yourself and try not to be too overwhelmed, as I know I definitely was at the beginning. Thinking about your own experience, what are some things that you would recommend others with Crohn's do when you're having a particularly bad day or episode On the other hand, what are some more prophylactic measures, things that they can do to take care when times are actually good, to keep them strong, strategies that have worked for you? So when I don't feel well, I try not to overexert myself. I try and do what is sort of necessary for day-to-day life. So if I feel well enough to go to work, I'll go to work, I'll go home, eat my food, try and get sleep. For me, whenever I feel run down, Having sleep is the most important thing. and I really feel more recuperated after sleep. And then making sure that I eat foods that don't trigger me. So I wouldn't really be eating any lentils or fibery food. I'd eat real plain Jain food, so like plain rice, plain chicken. Even though I'm gluten-free, I have like gluten-free bread, so like just toast. Sometimes I find a bit of mashed potato with a bit of salt. I don't know why, but the salt helps me. So just really plain food and then... That helps me get back on track and, yeah, definitely sleep. When I feel well, I think it's all about not running yourself into the ground, but also making sure that you do things that make you happy. Because when you're not feeling well and you're stopped from doing things that make you feel happy, you think, oh, I can never do this ever again. But if you make sure that you do those things when you're feeling well. So I love going to theatre, so I make sure that I go to the theatre. I enjoy cycling, so I make sure that I cycle when I'm feeling well I do those things that make me happy and then if your brain is happy sometimes it for me at least it makes my body feel happy and yeah really look at make sure that I'm eating good food exercising and making the most of the time available so then if I get sick and hopefully it wouldn't be for a long time I can think well do you know what last week you were doing this so in a couple of weeks it'll be fine you're back to normal that's what I like to do is there anything positive that's come out of having Crohn's I think it's made me be more in tune with myself. So I know a lot more about my own body and how I'm feeling. And I'm really sensitive to that. And if things are good or bad around me, that I'm really sensitive to that. And also, I think it made me sort of prioritize myself more and prioritize my time. Because before I could be going, or even when I had Crohn's, but before I understood myself and how to live my best life with Crohn's, I'd be doing things that I probably didn't really want to be doing. I'd be going to these events just because I should do for my career or should do for make someone so happy. But I think what it has done is it's made me more aware of my own time and the value of my time and making sure that I'm spending it with the right people, good people, and just really making sure that I'm making the most of sort of life. And yeah, it has made me aware of really good people around me. All my closest friends, I really value them. I've had a stronger relationship with them. Also, my mum, we have a good relationship. So, yeah, I think it, the best is prioritising myself, my time, and then aware of like really good people around me. Speaking of people around you, I'm curious, are there any things that if you were going to see a new physician, say, that would tip you off that that, that doctor really doesn't know how to treat or isn't trusting you and your own voice as a patient? Everyone's feelings are very different. So how one person might feel could be very different. But if a physician is looking at you and engaging with you and really hearing what you have to say, then that's a good sign. I also think by then not listening to your feelings and not looking at the piece of paper, 
I think I remember I had a new physician at the time and my Crohn's was mild to moderate at this stage and I said oh well it can't be that bad if it's mild to moderate and he said it's only how you feel that matters it doesn't matter what's on this piece of paper so I think if you have someone and they're really listening even if you are feeling sorry for yourself or you are catastrophizing something in your own head I think they shouldn't block off that thought they could potentially say something like it could be that your stress is aggravating it and making it worse, but they're still exploring both possibilities that you are feeling bad. Like often, even if I'm not feeling well, they would just take a blood test or something like that. There is stuff that you can actively do. No one wants to go to a colonoscopy all the time, but you can have some sort of test, like stool samples, blood tests, if you are feeling bad. And I think if you're palmed off or sort of brushed aside a lot, then that could be something that would signal that there's a poor physician and it's not really working. What are some of the best resources and communities that you've found for Crohn's disease? In terms of communities, in the UK, there's um, a group called Crohn's and Colitis UK and there's a Facebook page. And I wasn't really on any of that sort of stuff at the beginning. I was very not shy, but didn't really embrace having Crohn's. But I think that's a really good use of information. They have a website as well where you can read a lot of stuff. My doctor sometimes, when like when I got transferred onto my new medication, he printed off some publications from them, which was really useful and sort of explained it in layman's terms. And then I think the Facebook group is quite useful because when people are feeling anxious or if someone's going for something, you can read those sort of resources and you can see how they felt. I remember once I went for a colonoscopy and I had this awful medication to take. And then a couple of months later, I saw someone else running by. I was like, yes, it wasn't just me that thought this was awful. And they also run some events. Uh, last summer, I did a walk for Crohn's. Unfortunately, none of these walks are going to be happening this year. But across all different cities in the UK, there was a 10K walk. It just felt so nice to actually feel part of something because there's not that many people in the UK. There's only, I think, a quarter of a million people so it's still not that widely known but it was actually great to be in the middle of London and be in like a park and square and there being thousands of people walking so they're the communities that I've sort of found. So getting away from Crohn's disease I know that you have other health issues within your immediate family as well can you talk about what that's like for you and whether you feel there are any connections or links between some of these experiences? I guess, what does it feel like to have a disease in a family that maybe has other things going on as well? Having a disease myself and being with a family member that has one, it does make me more aware of what they're going through. So I can understand on one other level. It also makes me very much aware that there's so much I don't understand because I know that there's so much people don't understand about my disease. My brother's type 1 diabetic and he has to inject four times a day. And it's difficult seeing someone has to inject. For me, for Crohn's, I would think, well, God, I'm quite lucky. It's a lot easier for me than having to do that. Then equally, it's hard because you're looking at someone that you love and you're like, you can't help them. As in, you could get them insulin. You can, if they're low, you could give them some sugar and bring them up. But you also, with someone looking out, you do feel quite powerless to help them. There's certain things that you can put in place, but you ultimately it's their feeling and it's not your feeling. And sometimes I think there is that difficulty of you don't want to project your own feeling onto someone else. So it does make me understand sometimes when I feel like my mum is a bit overwhelming on me and it's too much on me, I can understand her want to protect me because I see it with my brother. Yeah, that makes sense that it would be it would be a bit complicated and that there are sort of benefits and things about it that are actually tough as well. At Health and Lee, we talk about healing, that word specifically, because we think healing is about more than just treating symptoms. Can you respond to that? Yeah, definitely. I think healing is more holistic than just treating symptoms because there's so many different things that are associated with a disease. It's more than just that physical aspect. You have the emotional side, you have the knock-on effects, your energy around you. So holistically healing is something that's really important. Sometimes treating symptoms is just like covering it up, like there's an action and you're just going to cover it up. Whereas if you're in the process of healing, 
it's more about thinking, okay, this is what's happening now. How can we stop it from the future? So it's my medication is helping me, but what steps can I actively take myself as well to make sure that I'm in a better position? Yeah, I think healing is a great word to think about it because you're not just trying to cover it up. You're going to actively want someone to heal so they're in a better position and they don't get to that awful state they were before. And then also the emotional side as well. You want someone to feel whole rather than someone that's just being like patched and stitched up. (laughs) Thank you for that perspective. And if you have time for a few more questions, I have a few rapid fire questions for you here at the end. Yeah, go for it. Okay. First, what are your top three tips from your own experience with Crohn's disease? Um, Okay. Mine is make sure you know where the nearest bathroom is. Exercise and make sure you're doing what makes you happy. What keeps you up at night? Right now, coronavirus. Um, (laughs) uh, What keeps me up at night would be if I have an appointment meeting at work the next day. What are your top habits that keep you sane and healthy? Oh, exercise, reading a book, and I like long baths. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Great. Last question. How do you keep your mind off your disease? Again, I think it's just by doing things that I enjoy, everyday life, make sure that you're just living in the moment. Well, thank you for speaking with me today. It's been a pleasure, and hopefully we can do it again. Thank you very much. Healing Together is produced by Health & Lee. Our theme song is Ramble, composed and performed by Ed Morneau. 